Good morning, good evening, good night, folks. This is your Football Scout 365 host and analyst, Woody Massey, and I'm here with the second episode of After Further Review for the 2023 season with lead analyst, Brandon Lundberg. What's up? Hey, episode two, here we are, man. CJ Stroud, are, man. another California quarterback. I know, oh. shout out the IE, Inland Empire. Yeah, it's insane, Better known right? as the murder, locally. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> the matter. Um, yeah, so CJ Stroud. Um, a lot of people have him and Bryce Young, one A, one B. Or some people a lot there's a lot of people out there got Stroud ahead of Bryce Young. Yeah. You see it. Teaser. I'm not one of those people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We'll get further into that. But uh, you know, we told you about what we got going on. Last week, guys, check out the Bryce Young video. Check out the podcast. We're going through mini camps right now. But uh, let's hop right into this. So, CJ yeah. Stroud, this dude last year came a first year starter, right? Yeah. And just absolutely destroyed. Like the yeah. stats <laughs> that this man put up is absolutely insane 4,435 yards, 10 yards per catch, 44 TDs, six interceptions. 186 rating like this guy was just incredible insane. incredible efficiency right for a first year starter coming in i mean he had you know he played behind justin fields he had time to learn from justin fields and you know he's got arguably one of the best qb minded coaches in college football and ryan day at ohio state and really when you look at his numbers from 2021 and heading into 2022 you look at it and you think where does he go from here? One of the big knocks on him has been his ability to take off and run, take the easy first down, get the easy yards and things like that, or just moving around in general. No, for sure. Uh, let's talk about player comparisons real quick, Brandon. Um, I'm going to go first here. The way he stands in the pocket. Now, the, this is just the way he stands. Honestly, the way he rolls out reminds me of one of my favorite players of all time. Uh, the way he stands up straight, he's not as tall, obviously, but sometimes he just leans back on that back foot and just sends it down the field. I see Joe Flacco, who, like, a lot of people would take that. See, exactly. A lot of people would take that as a diss, but, like, Joe Flacco literally had the greatest quarterback Super Bowl run of anyone yeah. of all time. So, like, if he could tap into that, like, Joe Flacco might make the Hall of Fame from one, a six-game stretch. Like, really sure. wrap your mind around that. That's insane. Yeah, I, but it was the greatest – quarterback run we've ever seen in the playoffs statistically it was wild but the way he rolls out this is not a mobile guy like he's not he's not a runner he had negative rushing yards last year mm. yeah this isn't your justin fields yeah like we're not going to see him scrambling around the way he rolls out which i could see success in a west coast offense reminds me a lot of my favorite usc quarterback of all time is carson palmer he's not the fastest yeah. He's got the long legs, though, because he's a tall guy, rolling out to the side, kind of heavy steps, slamming yeah. his shins into the ground and letting it fly on the run. I, I can see some Carson Palmer in the rollout. So that's two big quarterbacks. Carson Palmer 6'5", Joe Flacco 6'7", I think you said. Yeah. He he stands tall in the pocket, though. He looks bigger than 6'3", standing up there. That might just be the Big Ten athletes, but uh, he looks bigger that's, standing up When I'm looking at player comparisons myself, and I'm just kind of like – digging deep trying to figure out what makes sense one of those player comparisons that you're going to see a lot not a surprise because guess what i used joe burrow a week ago uh, i'm just going to use him on all of them <laughs> i used him a week ago for bryce young and he is back again. explain why that you're using this you're not comparing him to joe burrow you're right. comparing a trait the football iq he scans the field he identifies where the open man is uh, that's something that NFL talent evaluators are looking at, right? When you're scouting a player, you're looking to see, is he going from his first read to a second read to his third read, you know, as things are not there. And when a defense takes it away, how skittish is a guy in the pocket? It's hard to evaluate a guy when all of his receivers are NFL level, right? Well, like, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, like holy Jigba, cow. Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, Last year, he's he's missing two first-round picks this year, and he's still loaded. 
Like, yeah. Alabama's been the wide receiver room. But honestly, like, right now, Ohio State's got the most talented wide receiver room in the country. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. man. Deep, talented. Jamison Williams would have been considered, what, their fourth string wide receiver? And yeah, arguably... Yeah, mm-hmm. and arguably the best wide receiver coming out into the NFL draft. But when you when you have that kind of talent, it's what C.J. Stroud can do with it. Look at what uh, Joe Burrow was able to do with Jamar Chase, for example, and Justin Jefferson. Imagine that. I feel like this Ohio State offense has that that, uh, that juice this year. Uh-huh. Like that that this is a that they're for real. They're loaded. Tell me about the prospect so we can get this going into the film. CJ Stroud was a, a considered a five-star prospect coming out of high like 39th, right? Overall or something like that. Uh, he was the number two pro style quarterback and he was a top 50 player regardless of position. So yeah. yeah, he was in he was in the top 50. So he's one of the top performers at the Elite 11 finals. He earned MVP honors in 2019. He got to Ohio State. We talked about it already through for 4,435 yards. His first year as a starter, he just blows up. He was named Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year last year. He was a Heisman finalist, as we already discussed. He was first team all Big Ten. All of these things that I'm saying right now should be repeated this year. If he doesn't win the Heisman, he'll be a Heisman finalist. He should be the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year or the Big Ten MVP at the end of this season. The uh, icing on the cake, he set 17 Ohio State school records in 2021. All right, well, let's look at, like, the past. There's a reason. The Ohio State quarterbacks have a stigma. It's just flat out. I mean, I said it before Justin Fields. Justin Fields was the first guy where I was like, all right, this dude might do it. Actually, that's a lie. I was a I was a Troy Smith guy. I liked Troy Smith coming out of Ohio State. Yeah. But looking at these stats now, I'll tell you, man, he's up there. Yeah. Like Dwayne Haskins, all the talent in the world, threw for 4,800 yards. That's the only guy who hasn't beat. Yeah. And, you know, Dwayne Haskins, a lot of people thought he was the real deal. But he struggled with the uh, team taking football super seriously. I don't think it was his first love. R- R.I.P. Very talented athlete. Yeah. I. You know, honestly, the single season passing yards record, I think he's going to smash that this year. I really I think, do. Yeah, I, I think he will, too. I think he throws but for 5K. that point I'm getting at is Justin Fields was amazing. Yeah. He threw for 1,000 less yards. Yeah. <laughs> that That says something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Justin Fields was definitely more of a runner, a talented runner, and using his athleticism. I'm just, I'm not there yet with CJ. Like, I'd still rather have Justin Fields if we were comparing prospects. All right, Brandon, so tell us about the advanced stats about CJ Stroud. So, like, the top five quarterbacks, the PFF, your company, man, uh, graded out last year in 2021. Some surprising names on this list. Shout out Coastal Carolina. Liberty University's yeah. <laughs> rival. Yeah, so C.J. Stroud was top five in uh, PFF passing grade a year ago. C.J. Stroud had a 91 and a half grade. Uh, that's a huge testament to a lot of the things that he does well, like we talked about and what we're about to talk about. His accuracy under pressure, for example. Uh, C.J. Stroud from a clean pocket ranks seventh nationally. And with a dirty pocket, he was even better, actually. So under pressure, with pressure in his face, he ranked third nationally in adjusted completion percentage. So again, he's getting the ball where it needs to be accurately on a consistent basis. And then when we're looking at a player in terms of accuracy by field depth, short, medium, and deep accuracy, uh, his bread and butter is the deep ball. Uh, His adjusted completion rate, according to PFF, 56.5%. He was eighth nationally a year ago. All right, Brandon, before we dive into the film here, let's talk about the play style and the scheme fit. Now, this is going to be different. We're not going to see this guy in an air raid or something like that. I I mean, for me, like a more pocket-oriented, but like he could could go into like a West Coast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Ryan Day's offense is kind of like a, a, an air raid style attack, but what we've seen since Urban Meyer departed at Ohio State, we've seen them kind of change the offense a little bit. Now, Ryan Day, he, he had a stint in the NFL before he got to Ohio State. He uh, was with the Philadelphia Eagles. I believe he was the quarterback coach under Chip Kelly. One of the things that implemented into the Ohio State offense recently 
is getting the quarterback under center on occasion. You're seeing a little bit of that stuff sprinkled into the offense. So again, like you're saying, like the West Coast elements, things of of that nature in the passing game, he has diversified his offense and he's actually setting his quarterbacks up better uh, for success at the NFL level. Brandon, it's time to dim the lights. You know, I'm going to take out my pencil and pad and you're about to teach me some stuff about football. I don't know, all right? All right. All right. All right, Brandon, what do you got for me today? All right, here we go. Play number one, C.J. Stroud. This is actually a throw on the move. This is what we want to see a little bit more of out of him. Something not just taken off to pick up the easy yards, but actually moving around a little bit more to make a play with his legs. You can see here he's going to locate the receiver. He's actually pointing it out. Oh, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson takes a shot. He's down. All right, so this play, it's a play action pass. It's a little half roll. It's going to be a deep throw to the uh, slot receiver to the right side of the field. He's actually going to be running a deep crossing route over the middle. You'll see he's going to step up in here. He's going to launch this thing. And, of course, as usual, as Woody would say, Ohio State receivers are running wide open. Yeah. But there's that's for good reason. <laughs> he had plenty of time to throw. Anytime you have a ton of time to throw, somebody's going to get open. And when you have this uh, elite level of wide receiver talent at Ohio State, it's it's not hard uh, to make plays like that. But again, this is a design play. This is all by design. It's meant to get open like that. Uh, maybe not that open, but you can see the replay here, just kind of how it sets itself up. A little play action to Henderson. Linebackers are biting. Safety's bit. And boom. All right, so on this play, this is probably the the mecca of all of the plays that he's ever really made. This is another uh, deep fade, and it's Jackson Smith and Jigba in the Rose Bowl game. And you're going to see just perfect ball placement. And <laughs> Smith and Jigba, just the adjustment, looking over the top of his body like that. Not just looking over a shoulder, but just looking <laughs> upside that down. Angle, that angle yeah. is pretty impossible. But he put the ball in the perfect spot here. You can just see Smith and Jigba, better athlete here in position. Mm. All right. One of my favorite throws from uh, CJ Stroud happened in the Rose Bowl. He's going to kind of layer this game. throw. Yeah. This is a game. This, yeah. This is. Uh, he's going to layer this in between the linebackers and the defensive backs uh, over the middle of the field. This is an NFL throw uh, for CJ Stroud here. Just gets it right in there. Perfect throw to Jackson Smith and Jigba. And then he's going to do work after the catch. All right, again, we just talked about the layered throw in between the linebacker and the safety. We're going to get another one. This is back against Indiana a season ago. Uh, you're going to see him fit this into a tight window. This would be considered a big-time throw in between the underneath defender and the over-the-top defender, which the linebacker and the safety, he just fits it in there perfectly to Jackson Smith and Jigba. He hangs on. Big-time play, big-time throw by C.J. Stroud. Here's the replay from behind the quarterback. Just fits it right in there. I mean, on the money. So that's what you're looking for. This is what you're looking for. That's a big from time him. throw. Yeah, that's, that's an, an NFL, NFL throw. level throw. Yeah. All right, Brandon, we've seen the film. Whew. It was all right. It was all right. Man. I'm, you know, we got a I'm, critic over here. Well, I'm Ohio not State sold. Hater. I'm not sold, all right? I, I never, I'm not, uh, listen, I, I just see a, di a difference with Bryce Young. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the mobility. It is. It's the toolsiness of that aspect of, of Bryce uh, Young's game is he can move around and he can do some things differently. That's that's what he wants. That's his game. That's where he's in his element versus C.J. Stroud, more of the big prototypical passer in the pocket. But don't be fooled. I mean, he does have some athleticism, needs to show it off a little bit more, uh, I think, anyway, to to get himself into that, you know, next level of big time NFL quarterbacks, the the Josh Allens and the Justin Herberts of the world. If you want to get there, got to use that athleticism to the best of your ability. Sure. All right. So, Brandon, Bryce Young, he hit eight on a couple of the ratings. Yeah. What are we looking at with C.J. Stroud? A lot of people, some people have him over Bryce Young. Yeah. Do we, so uh, where are we at at Football Scout 365? I might be a little low in in the accuracy here, Ooh. but I've got him at a seven. Still very, very good. I think that, you know, this year we're going to find out 
you know, if he's going to take his game to the next level. There's moments where he underthrows some things, and I know we didn't go over it on the film review. So, yeah, accuracy, still a 7, still high level right there. I think he can jump that to an 8. His awareness and his football IQ is at a 7. His arm talent, a 7. Definitely has a super strong arm. He can do some of the arm angles. I've seen stuff. him make some amazing throws, but also I've seen him make some, like when he throws it up, it's a little low sometimes. Like but if me, he does make some throws against NFL corners, I just don't know if it's going to turn out the same. Let me be clear. A seven is, is it's really good. Like that's really good. Like yeah. we're talking, this is a guy who has NFL level caliber ability just a few things we want to see. He's losing Garrett Wilson. He's losing Chris Olave. Sure, he's got excellent receivers still going to be playing with him at Ohio State this year. This offense could be the most explosive that's ever been. Let's see him up this game just a little bit and, and take it to the next level in all three categories. He could be an eight in all three categories before it's all said and done, maybe an eight and two and a nine and another. Um, but again, his ceiling grade. So I believe he could be a high end starter at some point. Uh, once he does reach the NFL. I love it. Well, there we go, man. CJ Stroud in the books. We're obviously going to be checking back in on him and Bryce Young throughout the season. Probably do a uh, a, yeah. a part a part do each yeah. player. We should know. just review all of them like that. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, that's it. That's our number two quarterback on the board, baby. I think we're going to go Will Levis. Will Levis. Get those quarterbacks out there. Yep. Absolutely. Will Levis is a yeah. stud. There's some things he's got to clean exciting. out too. We're going to talk about that, but he could be, he could be I've a fan. I've been reading the giants like him a lot. Yeah. For about a year now. So the way they're looking, they might be up. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, Hey, Tyrod Taylor, you never know. Yeah. Look out. No, for sure. All right. All right, Brandon. Well, thanks for tuning in everyone. After further review, check out the podcast. We're talking about NFL training camp right now. Brandon Lumberg, Woody Massey. We are Football Scout 365. Without further ado, that was after further review.